We're here with Kara Swisher, editor at large and the founder of Recode. Kara, yes. coming off the big event, the Davos of Digital, the Code the Davos Conference. Davos of Digital. You like that? No, da I don't. What are the two, three or aha moments that came out of the conference for you in terms of illuminating someone's personality or what they might be doing? Well, I think um, there were a couple. We had obviously Facebook, Sheryl Sandberg mm -hmm. and their CTO, Mike Schrepfer there. Mm -hmm. um, their inability to, they were trying really hard to be open and transparent, but it's like an endless series of revelations that they're data hoarders, you know, that they're data thieves, essentially. It just keeps getting worse. It gets and worse. worse. And of course, none of these should be a surprise. Of course, they gave their data to the phone services. Mm -hmm. Of course, they gave their data to app providers. They needed to grow this platform, and data was the candy to get everybody as part of it. Um, that's what they that's what they have to give out. And while they don't technically give it out, they they hoard it and use it. And and that's you cannot get away from their basic business model, as we've talked about. Mm -hmm. My impression is their business is stronger than ever. The yes. media is angry about it, but no one else cares. Is that your? Well, impression? you know, interesting. I had an interview with Antonio Garcia Marquez, who 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 um, who had created some of these systems when he worked at Facebook, and he said the same thing, that people don't care about privacy. They willingly give it away. Yeah. Um, I think if there's some sort of data apocalypse, yes, people will care. Um, and when people understand the implications of it, but in general, people like the product and they're using it until they aren't using it, just mm -hmm. like AOL or anything else. I think that's really where their big problem will be, is that it will become like AOL. People will have something else to do. And people keep talking about the low morale at Facebook, and I don't know if that's the media just barking or if, in fact, that this scandal is taking a toll on the culture right. and morale at Facebook. Well, You're out there. Um, I don't know if the media barks, but thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, they meow more than anything else. Howl. Uh, howl, whatever. Uh, you know, I think definitely people there are, it, it is a reckoning situation with people. People feel badly about the hundreds of millions of dollars they've made off of data hoarding, essentially. Mm -hmm. And so right now they're at a part, place where they kept the money. They keep the money. They don't ever give it back. You never see them saying, now I'm going to give back my ill-gotten gains. Um, but they definitely are contemplating, do I really want to do this for a living? And I've heard that a lot from people. Is this what I want to do for a living? It's like, do I want to sell sugar water, maybe mm -hmm. if you were a Coke? Or do I want to sell sticks of death if you were a cigarette? Maybe. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like You can hear that in their voices, that maybe they, they had gone too far in how they made their money. Do you hear it in the Zuck's voice? I don't hear it. No, I don't think he thinks anything's wrong with it. No, yeah. no. I mean, he's definitely being reflective. I don't think he likes being pilloried this way. And I don't think he, I think compared to most CEOs, he's very thoughtful about it. And I don't think he feels great about it, but I never, I don't think it ever occurred to him until now. Mm -hmm. And as usual, they're in, um, they're in survival mode. You know, like we're gonna, they don't ever, I don't think they're anyone, many people in Silicon Valley do not reflect very well on what someone says. Like what happened when Tim Cook made that comment about I wouldn't be in this situation. Instead of going listening to what Tim Cook said, which some of which was very cogent, mm -hmm. it, was, it was all very cogent, Tim Cook's really cogent, but it was all smart. Instead of saying, ah, I'm listening to this very smart guy who runs a nearly trillion dollar corporation, maybe who has this experience of many decades, they immediately went into attack mode at Apple. Mm -hmm. Like, they're making money from iPhones. How dare they say this about us? You know, yeah, iPhones are expensive. News yeah. at 11. Like, nobody <laughs> knew that. And so that was, in, that to me was more interesting than anything else. The reaction to the Apple remarks was not, to me, what an adult would do. It's what a recalcitrant teenager would do. So do you think Apple's actually cleaner? Because as the father, you know, we're, we both have boys. And yeah. I see that, that crack-like addiction. Yeah. I see what feels like massive tax avoidance. Is this disingenuous, or do you think Apple really does take their responsibilities to be corporate citizens more seriously? Well, you know, they're still a corporation, so mm -hmm. fewer taxes is what they love. Mm -hmm. You know, no matter what, you, you can't pretend that these com these companies like to pretend they're not big corporations, mm -hmm. and, and they are. And if they can get a tax break, they'll get a tax break. Um, that said, I think they do they do consider privacy a much more sacrosanct thing comparatively, but their business isn't about that. And they couldn't do it if their business was about that. Um, and so they they can be they can afford to be, you know, holier than thou about it. I don't think they're even holier than thou. Just they can afford to say we don't like this business because one, they don't like this business, and two, it hurts a competitor like Facebook. Yeah. Although Facebook's not precisely a competitor, but it it distances them from that kind of it deep scummy. Them or, like yeah. I, we do not want to be affiliated with these people essentially that said they their business is about addiction using these phones more and it was interesting those announcements um about how to you know grayscale the phone and know what you're using and more awareness is a smart move by them
So relationship with the press, uh, staying quiet for five, six, whatever it was, eight days post the Cambridge Analytica, will that go down as the mo is the w one of the worst moves in terms of handling the press in history from Facebook? Yes, I believe so. Not the worst move, like Nixon did a bad job. Nixon, okay. <laughs> Nixon know. and Cambridge Analytica, yeah. that's, that's our bar. Yeah. What do you think? It was happened? terrible. It was so. It was so. Do you slow think they to were just were they just deer in the headlights, or they thought it wasn't no. a big deal? What what actually happened that week where they didn't? Because they, they really shot themselves. I in the foot. I think Facebook is one of the more companies that compromises quite a bit uh, publicly, and I think they were weighing everything from a legal and PR point of view mm -hmm. instead of being honest about what was going on. Uh, you know, just the contrast between. Uh, Facebook and say Snapchat, that interview I did with Evan Spiegel, yep. boy, could you see every insecurity, every difficulty on his face. And he didn't shy away from saying, this is a problem, this is a this. And so I think what Facebook does is they weigh every word, and that's what it feels like. Well, 700 people who work in PR and communications. It, the so, they have so many people, and they're the best. They really are. But I think what happens is they lose their humanity. And I think a lot of, whether people care or not, it mattered. And I think that was what it was. It's not the press overreacting to this. They had a platform they mishandled. Mm -hmm. They had a platform they mismanaged. It wasn't necessarily malevolent, but it sure was sloppy. And these were supposed to be the best managers in Silicon Valley, and they're doing great. But they didn't have control of their platform, and their platform is massive and, um, and important and impacts people. And so if they weren't responsible, they should be held to task. Whether or not the public cares, you know, like cigarette manufacturers, like anybody else. They're doing something that's dangerous, that could be potentially dangerous. And one of the things that came through in that interview with Cheryl was like, we had no idea there were so many bad people in the world. We were looking at the good people. Well, you know, like you didn't notice the bad people. How sweet. We didn't know it could be misused this way. Well, why didn't you? What's wrong with you that you have this? It's literally like saying, you know, Dr. Frankenstein, your monster is ruining the village. What? Like, you, what? What? It was supposed to be a gentle giant. We had no idea. <laughs> you know what I mean, you sort of sit there and you're like, are you he's, kidding he's me? He's actually very nice at home. Yeah, uh, yeah. So do you think, it get, in terms of Facebook and Dad, do you think it gets worse or do you think the safeguards they're putting in place are largely going to be effective? Well, I think the press isn't giving up on these. These New York Times stories, you know, are really interesting. Like, every day there's going to be someone else they gave data to. Today it's the Chinese. Yesterday it was the phone manufacturers. You know, I, I'm waiting for the Putins that like <laughs> they hand delivered information to Putin or something like they didn't do that. But uh, breaking news. Breaking news. Um, you know, I think they have a platform that's very has a, is a sieve is a, is clearly the, the safeguards around their use of data are not as robust as they need to be. What do you think happens? Do you think there's regulation, trust busting? What do you think happens? There? It would be in a very in a in a in a rational political situation. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, it but would. What be. about our situation? I think they'll get Nothing. away scot-free. I don't know. Maybe if the Democrats get back, Democrats are pretty pissed. Yeah. And they're, you know, I interviewed Cory Booker. I interviewed a bunch of, Kamala Harris is obvious as concerns. Mm -hmm. There's FTC commissioner. You know, there's, they, they broke the consent decree. There's people gunning. They're not the favorite. And people will have a long memory of, of this, I think, for sure. So you you know these people. Yes. And if, if management team, if, if management and intellect and you'd like to think integrity and over the long term, uh, has an impact on stakeholder value. What management team uh, would you bet on? Who are you consistently just impressed with and think these guys are really operating? These guys and gals are operating at. Well, a, everybody at a high has level. their positives and negatives, right? I think Apple is. A oh, lot that, of you're not, that's such yeah. bullshit. No, 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 that's no, no. not like, like look, you. Amazon. I would say Amazon. Amazon that's a really okay. cohesive group of people, okay. but it's all dudes. And look what happened with Roy Price. So yeah. they have no insight into put that issue like yeah. they and they really screwed up so but they're very good at the others i think they're really they're very smart on how they make decisions there so um, amazon first trillion dollar company people no i think apple i think apple, apple okay. again a the very better question first two trillion dollar company the first two trillion oh amazon amazon yeah okay amazon. so the, the the team you least want to compete against amazon amazon i would say but apple too um netflix what an interesting group of people um, I think they make a lot of right moves, yeah, but not, they're not going to make all of them. Um, I think all of them suffer from lack of diversity and going forward. And I don't mean just like you have to have one from column A, one from column B, but um, it's a diversity of thought. 
And I think that ultimately will kill a lot of these companies, is that they're almost too, one of the things that Facebook, and I talked about this with Cheryl on stage, I've talked with Facebook executives, is they, they celebrate their cohesion. They've all been together 10 years. I don't necessarily celebrate cohesion. I like irritants. And so where are the irritants in the system that are looking for the next thing? They're all so rich. They fly on their private planes. Easy, impossible not to become insular. Not just insular, but like, I don't even know, there's something beyond insular, mm -hmm. is that they don't have any idea of what's Tone going on. Everything, yeah. everything. They're, why should they? Everything, they, they move their hand and there's a new kombucha shake in their hand, like, and they have their plane and they go from here. They don't wait in lines. I know it sounds crazy, right. but they don't wait in lines. They don't understand the friction of life or the, or the possibility of disaster. Um, because they're because they're insulated, but it's more it's more than that. It's, it's so some of the other companies we always talk about the big four and uh, right. at five and six Microsoft yeah. and Tesla. Can you some smaller companies where you're just consistently impressed by management and think they're a Brian Chesky at Airbnb. I'm yeah. always I, we had him on stage. I really I think he's a very thoughtful young man. I think he's smart. I think they face challenges. I think he acknowledges them. I, I'm always, I, I love their product. It's a joke. I, yeah. He does see his challenges and the yeah. difficulties. It doesn't mean it's going to last, but I, I like that group of people. I find them. Um, I do like, uh, I always like Netflix. I think Reed Hastings is always. Probably the most underrated CEO, right? What they've no, pulled I think off he's is, highly rated. I, but when, but when you, if you look at the press, it's Zuckerberg, I mean, yeah, and I you don't it. hear about Reed as nearly as much I, as the other guy. I remember having him to Sundance 10, 15 years ago with, and we had Jason Kylar, who was just starting Hulu, him um, and the, the Chad Hurley, who had found, just founded YouTube. It was mm -hmm. a long time ago when they were very small, all of them. And I, we were in a basement, and, and I kept saying, These, this, this guy especially is going to be huge. And there was like 20 people from Hollywood, and they were like, oh, I don't, we don't understand this streaming mm -hmm. thing or whatever they were doing. Um, I find him to be why. He's on the board of Facebook. I think he's, has a, he's having a big impact there. I think he's very difficult on that board. Not difficult, but in a good way. Really? Yeah, I think he's really challenging them uh, in, at, on that board. I, that's what I've heard. Um, but in an adult way, I think he's a, just an adult. He's always interesting. He, he's very thoughtful. I think he's on the board of Microsoft, too. He's on the board of a couple. Maybe he left Microsoft's board. But um, I find him to, I find what they do flawless a lot of the time, like, and creative and innovative. So I, I like that about them. And they're making big bets, but in cogent ways. They're not crazy kind of bets. Um, so I like that group. I like Airbnb, different, totally different personality, Airbnb, but I like them. So it's let's go the other way. If, if, if a company crashes, big scandal, you look back and say, that doesn't surprise me. Well, Uber. Uber. You know. Still. Well, no, we had Dar on stage just yeah, recently. Yeah. Um, he's obviously the adult in the room. and He's, he's so likable. He's so likable, isn't yeah. he? Don't you want to just, he's, he's just, just like, a nice guy. good guy. Will you be my friend? Yeah, we'd be, yeah. he really is. And he's, like, he looks good. He's yeah. like very confident. Um, he's not like a shy, retiring person either. So he's got a little bit of swagger to him. I think that's the difficult challenge he has on lots of issues in terms of drivers, in terms of making money, in terms of navigating the self-driving stuff and in changing a very toxic culture. And I don't know if that's possible. I, I think cultures are born from the beginning of companies. And if it, start, if it is toxic, how do you turn that around in a, in a way that's, I think he's, I've always thought he and others are misjudging the depth of that toxicity at that company. You would think from back here that all these guys hate each other because they all feel like they're the rightful heir to the throne. Do they get along? Do these guys hang out at all? Are they, do these no. companies work? They don't? No. They're each other's. I don't think they dislike each other. I, don't, I think they're from different eras. Like Tim Cook's a different age. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark has his little group. I don't, you know, I don't, there's a social construct there, but it's not like, uh, like Hollywood. It's not like that. They're not constantly at parties together and hanging out. There you go. Last right question. Come, as someone coming out of Columbia School of Journalism mm -hmm. right now, what, what advice would don't you Don't go give to them? Columbia School don't of Journalism. To, say they make a mistake and they go to graduate school I wish I had taken that, to, whatever it cost at the time, 5000 whatever it was, 100 years ago, and invested in Apple. I wish I had done that because yeah. I would have been sitting pretty. Well, that's not advice. What, what, is someone, someone said, I'm in. I'm, 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 I, don't, I don't know why. I think you should get a job. Get a job. Get a job. So not in journalism or what sure. do you mean? Yeah, if you like to write, yeah, there's never yeah. been more opportunity. There's so many opportunities to do things. There's so many opportunities to, to be. I think you could do have a whole career writing on Twitter like I do. You and I do. Yeah. are always yeah. tweeting at people. I'm not sure it's a career. But no, anyway. but I like it. I enjoy yeah, it's it. It's fun. Yeah, it is fun. Kara Swisher, editor at large and founder of Rico. Large editor is what at, I am. There you go. <laughs> Thanks for your time, Kara. Thank you. I keep my sunglasses on so you can see